So the next thing I want to add is this filter type menu. And I want this to be data driven. So what I'm going to do is create 17 JSON files. And I'll have one for tech stack, one for payment, one for industry, one for benefits, and so on. The JSON files will contain a label, which will say, for example, tech stack. And will also contain an array, which will contain the choices for that filter type. For example, in tech stack, I'll have the various technologies you can choose from. Okay, so I've added my 17 JSON files. You can see them here on the left. I've opened up tech stack. You can see we have a string, a label, and an array called list of the items and index, which will indicate where in the array to hold this, which I can iterate through to display it. So each of these, if we go to benefits, you can see the label benefits, the list of the different benefits, and then index three. So that'll be third on my list. So that controls which order they're listed in. Let's take a look at another one. Here's a list of popular companies and label index five, and then the list. I've decided to use Axios for my Ajax gets. So have to install that npm package npm install axios so i implemented this choose a filter type menu and it doesn't currently do anything but it does get the data dynamically i've copied up the data files to my website patcoston.com slash portfolio data and you can see there are 17 json files each one is representative of these 17 options, for example, tech stack. So you have the label tech stack, and then the list you'll see when you click on it, your available technology that you can select, and the index. This index indicates the order. For example, payment should have index 1, and it does. So the data itself determines the order in the array. Now you can see that I'm running from localhost, and this does an Ajax get to patcoston.com. And as a result, you get a cross scripting error. And there's more information in the details. But what I had to do was install this Chrome extension. If I turn this off and let's inspect the console and I'll hit refresh, you'll see that nothing appears here because all 17 Ajax calls fail because of the CORE's policy. CORE stands for cross-origin resource sharing and I'll have this link in the description. I'll also include this link which discusses CORE's, XSS, and CSRF. XSS stands for cross-site scripting and that can be used for an injection attack. CSRF, cross-site request forgery, is also a type of attack that CORES prevents. So let's take a look at the code. This filter type menu is a component which I'm rendering here inside home.tsx. Here's the code for filter type menu and you can see I am calling use store to get my filter data and we will cover that context component later. I iterate through my filter data which is an array of objects to render out this ULLI, which renders this menu. So one standard way of coding that I'm going to follow is every component will be wrapped in a div with a class name. So you can see in my CSS, I'm using SAS. There's a hierarchical structure here. So the outer class file type menu, which is this file type menu, then references these inner classes file type menu body, file type menu header. So here's how I'm reading in those 17 JSON files. I have a function called read data and I pass in the name of the JSON file like tech stack and inside a try catch I'm calling axios.get and I'm passing it the URL to the data file which is a constant so here's the constant patcoston.com slash portfolio slash data slash. It assembles this URL, then the source name, like tech stack, dot JSON. And when that comes back, it calls the then method and gets the object into data. And then I get the index and use that as my subscript 
into my JSON array. You can see that JSON data is of type filter data array. Filter data array is an array of T filter object and T filter object is label index and list. So label index list. To call read data 17 times for each of the JSON files, I created an array of string called data name and I called data name dot map on that to iterate through that array that calls read data for each of these strings. This read data does a return response. Response is what we get back from Axios and it's a promise. And so this map creates an array of promises. Then I call promise dot all and pass it that array of promises. Once all of these JSON files have been read in, then this then method gets called and I call set filter data and set the variable in my context called filter data. So you can see that I'm using the spread operator to take the contents of this array JSON data and spread it into a new array and then pass that new array to set filter data. I'm curious what would happen if we didn't create a new copy but instead passed JSON data. Will that work? Let's try it. So I'm going to hit refresh and it works. But the difference is now we're using a closure. And I'll have a link to this in the description. So if we pass JSON data, we are now pointing to this local copy of JSON data. We now have a closure and that works. So I'll keep it like that. Next, I want to discuss where set filter data is and where the filter data is kept. I created a functional component called store provider and it uses use state, create context and use context. Now you're probably familiar with use state and I have the filter data. This is where the array of objects goes for that menu and its submenus. FC is functional component and I pass in the prop children. This is my JSX here and you can see that the contents it renders out children. So here is where I use the store provider in my index.tsx and the children is everything within the store provider. So my browser router, react.strict mode, and calling app. This globalizes use state. And filter data, like I said, is my array of objects. And set filter data is the function that sets filter date. It's initialized to an empty array, and this is the type, being that this is TypeScript. So I call create context to create a new context. And then I pass that to use context of type store and that creates the use store which I then export and that's how I access filter data and set filter data. Now store is defined under my interfaces and you can see it's filter data and set filter data. So going back to filter type menu using use store to get the filter data which we render out the ULLI which renders out that menu and back to app.tsx where I use uStore to get set filter data to set filter data. Next I want to create a production build and copy this up to my website patcoston.com so I'm going to run npm run build. Now that it's done it's created a build folder with the optimized code which I can copy up. So here's the build folder it created. You can see a lot of the fav icons that I generated, the index.html, and the static code is here. You can see that the JavaScript is minified and obfuscated. What I mean by obfuscated is that the variable names are all changed to very short names like A, B, C, D, which also reduces the file size, but obfuscates it as well, makes it more difficult for somebody to take and uh, reuse. The CSS is also minified. You can see it's all on one line. So next I'm going to FTP this build folder up to my web server. I'm refreshing now and nothing's happening. 
let's take a look and inspect and see what the problem is. So it's failing to load. And the problem is I've loaded this into a subdirectory. It's not copied to the root. If it was copied to the root, there'd be no problem. But what's happening is it's trying to load the files based on absolute paths back to my root folder, and it's not finding them. So the fix is to go into package.json and add homepage.slash. And that'll make the paths relative to the subfolder you copy the build folder. So I'll do the build again, npm run build. Then I'll FTP the files up to my web server again. And now let's hit refresh. And now it works. I wanted to make the point that when you do a get, you pass it a URL, it doesn't know if you're accessing the contents of a static JSON file or if there's some middleware like node.js which is returning a static JSON or some dynamically generated JSON or if that middleware is then contacting a database and reading some data then formatting it as JSON could be static in the database or it can be dynamically changing data it doesn't know all it knows is it's doing a get and it's getting back JSON data that's all it knows